Hey everybody, it's Josh with Cool Guys Nation. We are going to be doing a painting slash tutorial for Kingpin today. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I'll have all the paints that I use in there and we'll go step by step. Uh, like always, if you like, please uh, share, hit that bell button, and uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Welcome to my quick and dirty paint job for Kingpin. I'm going to be using, not glue, these colors. Game Air Silver from uh, Vallejo, Nuln Oil. Those are the two non-contrast paints. Then we're gonna use Black Templar, Apothecary White, Shyish Purple, Gillum Flesh, and Nasdrag Yellow. That will be the majority of the paint job. This, this paint, which I am gonna really need some more of, you wanna shake this really good, real good. Uh, this is going to be the base for the entire suit that he's wearing. You don't have to worry about thinning your paints with this. I, I uh, will put this on pretty thick and then spread it out. This I love this like light, light gray that really folds into all the textures. You just want to make sure that you're smoothing it out pretty good so you don't have any streaks or real smudges or anything. And you can put it on pretty dark. It does lighten up a bit. And you don't have to be super, uh, you don't have to worry about going over too much on this. If you make any mistakes, you can just go over with white again. So I'm gonna try to hit these real flat, big flat areas first. Yes, I know he's being wearing a shirt, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Just gonna try to make sure that we get these big flat areas done real quick uh, so that if there's any pooling that I don't like, I can uh, get that taken care of right away. Because there will be pooling that you don't like. Now I will go over a little bit into the shirt on this. Uh, that's not gonna be a big issue and it will just add a little to the, the shading for the shirt but it will make it so if you make any mistakes and uh, don't go all the way up to the, the right area, it won't look weird like there's a big white gap or something. So get right into all those nooks and crannies and just make sure everything looks kind of smooth. Try to remove any brush strokes that you have on here. It's looking pretty good so far. Let's get down on his pants. Like I said, I am going to be going down over the, the, to make sure there's good coverage all the way to the shoes. The shoes are going to be black, so I'm not too worried about uh, any spillage over onto them. Won't make any difference. I did go over the buttons. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to hit them with a dab of white. And that will be no issues. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and just make sure we don't get too much pooling we don't like. It's a little heavy at the feet here. Usually the bottom of the model will get the most pooling because all the paint um, flows to the bottom. So, and we'll be back when it's dry. He's dry enough now to get to the next stage. Uh, the next stage, I'm going to go ahead and do the flesh tone on him. I'm using that uh, Gilliman flesh. And this is a pretty simple process. Basically, you're just gonna brush it on. Uh, this you wanna be a little bit neater for because the colors that you're gonna be working on afterwards near this are not gonna work well together. Just be careful with this one. Make sure you're painting in the lines. I'm not too worried about the ring actually because I am gonna do hit that with white real fast before uh, we do the gold, if I have to. If not, I'm not too worried about that. That's a real small part. But if I can avoid hitting it, I will. Looks like I successfully completed that. Remember, it's contrast, so you can have a little pooling because that just creates a, um, the shadow and stuff that you want the contrast color to have for you. And like always with contrast, if you screw up, you can just put some white in that area and just go right over it again. Try to 
avoid hitting that ring. I'm also of the school, if you can't see it, don't bother painting it. I know a lot of people will still paint things but they can't see. Never understood it, I guess, if you're a completionist. Uh, another thing about Gilliman is that it is uh, it dries a, li a little bit lighter than it looks when you put it on, so keep that. Keep aware of that. I always try to leave the most most paint when I'm doing contrast in the eyes. Uh, because then I don't have to paint them later. Because I don't paint eyes, I just leave them darker. Now, I'm going to try to get a little bit of this a little bit lighter on the top of his head if I can manage that. And he's got a little bit of a mold on it, I didn't see. And I was putting them together, which is wonderful. Facetiousness. Trying to get some of this into his the back of his neck. There we go. Alright. Happy with that. Flesh is done. Actually, going to take a look at what we've got here. One paint color that I did not get is the white. I'm gonna actually get that white and go over those buttons. Uh, white is just a Vallejo game color. Uh, these little uh, cardboard things that come with these models I have, I guess, a use since I'm going to use them to get these buttons done. Let's find a brush I don't hate. A little bit of water and then I'm just gonna hit these buttons real quick when I'm trying to do these little pieces I'll try to just hit with the side of the brush right where I want it to go. All right, uh, those buttons are done. And then where I got this pocket uh, square, whatever it is, I'm gonna just hit that with that white too. I don't see anywhere else that needs it. Everything else looks pretty good. You now I've just seen a little spot that needs a little contrast. spot and we're gonna wait for some drying uh, we'll come back with hmm I guess we'll come back with the dark gray we'll be back with that in a minute next step is uh, the contrast black we're gonna be using the same brush as we did before for the uh, actual suit uh, and I might drop it down a little bit depending on uh, what's going on using that black con the um, black Templar contrast and we're gonna hit those boots or I guess their shoes rather I don't care if I get it on the base I'm actually gonna be painting the base with, uh, with actual paints so they'll easily cover this contrast. Went a little over here onto his pants. I'm gonna see if I can uh, just water it down and spread it out a little bit, which seemed to work. No big issue. I love the little uh, sign for Daredevil's Law Practice. He's stomping all over, symbolizing his stomping of the legal system. 
and Daredevil at the same time. All right, shoes are done. Next part is gonna be the body of this cane. Now, because uh, this cane is small, if you flick while you're painting, you can spread that paint somewhere where you don't want it to go. So just be careful when you're applying, especially paint that's in your brush heavy. All right, cane's done. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the front of this shoe. Just like, it was a little light. Same thing on the other side, no big deal. Contrast paint for the win. Just was a little, I want it a little bit darker than what it was coming out. Switching brushes up. Now that we're going into a more delicate area, gonna get a little bit smaller of a brush. Because you're going so dark over some of these light areas, you definitely want to be a little bit more careful. You can see I went over a little bit already onto the flesh and go back and fix that with some white later. But just try to be as neat as you can. We're just doing a quick and dirty kingpin because I want to get them ready for play. I'm not too worried about having the craziest method. Now, there is a little uh, cuff link here. I'm just gonna paint over it because it's actually easier than trying to avoid it. And so I'll go back and I will take care of that at the end. Um, I'm seeing now I got a little bit of white spot underneath this pocket, which I can fix in no time at all. This part scares me a little bit though. very gentle. Sometimes your brush will lean to one side a little bit at the tip. Use that if you can to get it where you want it to go. Okay, before I forget that one little spot, I'm just gonna pop back to this apothecary white and hit the underneath of this pocket because I don't want to forget to get that fixed. Okay. We might even go to a smaller brush for this up, upper part here. I think we will. Um, so we are not going to uh, be painting uh, his tie. We're gonna actually do that purple. And we'll try to avoid hitting the tie completely, but we have to make sure we get this shirt up where it goes. I'll actually push a little bit with that paint to get it to where it want, needs to go. If I need to come back with that white, like I said, that doesn't take uh, very much time. Just try to be as neat as you can. See, I've got a little over on that, but that will take about a minute to fix once it's dry. It's looking pretty good now. Now, here's the part I don't like. There's a tiny little ridge where his suit goes around, but you can still see some of his shirt. I am going to try to do my best to hit that spot without messing up too bad. But I might mess up, so here we go. All right. A little bit on his chin here. Pulled it off with some water. No big deal. All right, see, so clean that right up. Now, I've got a little bit on this shirt. I'll try the same thing, and if it doesn't work, 
you know what'll happen, just some light. I'm just gonna hit the edge right here where I went over a little bit. Same thing on this side here. Tiny bit right here. I'm doing his cufflinks with the silver. So, this is pretty dry now. I'm gonna hit this cufflink real quick. And then he has one that's barely poking through right here. We're gonna hit that. We're now ready to go on to the yellow, which is the gold, which is the Nasdaq yellow. And this is pretty easy to apply. We're just gonna hit these gold spots. And I uh, will hit them a little hard and leave a little bit uh, of a puddle there because when it dries, it will look really good. It'll really highlight that button a little bit there. Next, I'm gonna get these other two buttons before I forget. rings no I'm not too worried if this goes into the flesh a tiny bit because they're so close to each other's color it's not gonna matter and one more ring and then I'm gonna do the head of this cane so I'll hit this little spot here that we painted white and then I'm gonna go underneath his hand here. Get this all painted up gold. All right, I think that's everything for the gold. Now we're just gonna wait for the gray to dry so we can do the purple. We are back with basically the last step. We're gonna be painting the pocket square and the tie with the shyish purple. Now this stuff is real dark. So, um, you don't have to put it on as thick as normal contrast paint. If you want to see the purple at least, because uh, it can look almost black. So just keep that in mind when you're putting the shyish purple on. Now this is gonna be kind of annoying going into these little tiny areas. But the good news is that it's going next to black, which hopefully will make it pop a little bit. So you can tell that it's not, in fact, black. There we go, I've got one tiny little step left on the actual guy. I'm gonna take some Nuln Oil and I'm gonna pop it. A little tiny bit of it on these, uh, you know, just actually this one, uh, this silver cuff link. If I can get enough to come out to actually make a difference, there we go. I just want a little variation in texture there. But that, my friends, is a finished kingpin. Very distinguished looking. I'm gonna go ahead and do the base too with you guys. Uh, it's how I base all of my Marvel Crisis Protocol and that's, I guess, a bonus little bit to this vid. 
Um, it shouldn't take too much time. I'll go in and uh, get the stuff set up and show you what I do with it. It's pretty simple. I've got two grays, secret weapon baby poop, secret weapon uh, sewer water, and then I also use some gnome oil. Uh, the first step is I just get a little bit of this gray. I'll take a relatively large brush tip, get a little water, mix this together. And then I'm just gonna paint the base. Uh, the whole base just gets painted, one base coat of this. Uh, in some of the high areas, I might put a little bit of the, the brighter color, uh, mix it up, but just be sure not to go over the model's feet, which shouldn't be that hard. And it's also a gray, it's just darker, so it won't even mess up that bad. Uh, and I go all the way up to the edge, but I don't go on the side because there's no point in me painting that black. I feel that all the miniatures should have gray, uh, not gray, black edges. And I actually go up onto the base with my black because I like the way that that looks better than, uh, than just not painting that little tiny lip there uh, and have it the color of the rest of the base. I don't know, it's just me maybe. And that's pretty much it. I said I'm just gonna go around and yeah that's it so I spilled some gnome oil I'm very sad uh, I did actually go in and paint the sign and these two little spots with some silver uh, next step is going to be doing the wash mix so I'm gonna take the baby poop I'm going to take the sewer water Slightly mix them together, and we're gonna put them on. And we'll come back and do the metal in a little bit. Wash has been applied, but it's still drying. Got a little on the base on my mat. Um. But yeah, there's uh, what it, the base is gonna look like and then we'll go from there. Next part of the basing technique is uh, we're gonna do a quick dry brush of the base. So standard dry brush fare, just make sure you get the brush almost empty. We're gonna use white for this. I don't know if I specify, we're just gonna use that same dead white from Vallejo. Check it on your skin. Uh, and we're just gonna do a real light dry brush on here. Just to pick out uh, some details. I usually do the edges because that looks pretty good. And, and really, that little bit of dry brush really makes that base pop. Done with that part. Next part, we're gonna paint the base black. Just a little Abaddon black. A little water here, grab out a little paint, and then we're just gonna go around the base real quick. And then I go in after I got all the way around, I'm just gonna go in real uh, gently and hit the top of this lip. Because I think these Crisis Protocol models look better with this top lip black. You don't have to do this part, but I feel like it makes these guys look real finished then. Almost like they're on like a little bit of a pedestal. And the very, very last part of this tutorial is the thing I put on my bases to really 
actually not finish them off. There's this mini nature stuff. It's like a, a little foliage things. And uh, it comes in like these little clumps and I just chop a little of this clump off. And then I just glue it to the base. I typically glue it to some place that needs to be covered up a little bit or that's a little too sparse. Uh, I'm gonna put one right in front of this little sign bit here. I feel like it would look pretty cool coming out of the sign. So just dab a little glue in there and I'll pop this one in right here. Perfect. Now, I kinda want a piece right here. This glue's real drippy, unfortunately. It dries super clear, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll put this next one right there. And I'm trying to try to get this little bit off of the black part. There we go. There's Kingpin. He is completed. Pretty quick, dirty job. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, we have um, tons of videos. Uh, some tutorials, some bat reps, uh, a lot of uh, just paint and chats. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please uh, hit the like button. Please hit the bell button. Uh, and if you want to follow us on uh, Facebook as well, we'd appreciate it. Like always, we'll see you on the table.